I'm here connecting with my own grief, my grief of being by myself, being alone, my grief of doing, being isolated in a way from community and from friends. I'm sad uh, because there is something missing in my life in connection with people. There is a way in which I'm doing things in, that is n not opening up yet the, the resources to, to show up, up in my life. I'm grieving that I have zero dollars in my bank account, that I have only some bread and peanut butter uh, to eat right now. And that there is men and other people that I'm working with, specifically men that I'm working with that I've been sharing space with uh, in the last few days. And I've been uh, really present inside of this map of the, the three worlds. There has been so much uh, out of uh, the space has been in a way, like put like a prison, a prison of stories. These are my stories, this is my story, my story, my story. I suck, I'm gonna rot in jail and die. I'm going to uh, uh, frustrate or like, uh, I'm not gonna get anything good from life. I'm just gonna die and, and life sucks and life is hard and it sucks and then we die. That, that kind of uh, story, just uh, put in the space that, that I was seeing and that, I, that I'm in, uh, putting this, that prison around the space and making it like so choking, like there is no space for anything else. Everything else has already been discovered. Everything has already been figured out and there is no space for anything else other than story that I have about myself, what life has been showing me that is possible, the evidence that I have uh, uh, captured from the situations that I've been in over and over again. And the, the, this kind of space like just like puts the space into a, a, a sort of prison that well, not, nothing else is possible from there. Just becomes, yeah, like that, that, that shit. Becomes the worldly shit, and that's all there is. And as a possibilitator, and uh, through different shifts of identities, um, I've been saying, like, okay, yeah, 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 that's that's there. That's there for me too. I've been seeing this poop in my life. I've been seeing this shit. I, I can smell it. I can feel it. I can touch it. It's all over my space. And yeah, this is the, the this is the poop. This is the poop. And in a way, the part that is not complete is that, in a way, is like it's all there is. Like it's all poop. And I think. It, uh, from what I was getting from the spaces that I was sharing from uh, with other people is that it's all poop. There, there is nothing else. The people are stupid. The, the world sucks. I suck too. And nothing works. Everything that I try to make collapses. And so these are the kind of results that are, are being shown in the space. And 
I think for anybody that is in this place, in this situation where the, all they can see is the, this like the negative aspect of the world or like not even negative, it's like poopy aspect, this is a shed aspect. It stinks, it's a piece of shed and, and nothing, there is no, nothing else. And I, this is something that's very valuable. Like there is, um, cause you can like put that on the table and, and, and this, this process of putting it on the table of bringing it out, it already is extraordinary. So as a possibilitator, uh, I've been uh, yeah saying, yeah, this is the poop that you have, and like this is, it's here, it's on our space now. And it, it starts creating this uh, compost, this, uh, this soil, uh, where other things start becoming possible. Other, like really other things can grow out, out from it. And, and what I've been experiencing with this, two men that I, I've been working with is that there is there is so much of it that it, it becomes like the, the whole thing like it's just gonna take so long to to get all the poop out to put all the poop out in the table and and it seems like that's all there is like yeah and the, the story is that that's all there is like there is nothing else other than poop and as a possibilitator, I've been completing back the, the communication and saying, yeah, put the poop on the table. And throughout this map of the three worlds, uh, uh, other possibilities has been starting to show up. And yesterday, I went through a liquid state in about communicating what the upper world is inside of this uh, research. I went into a liquid state about what is the upper world and and I was seeing uh, the underworld is like the, the, the under layer under the soil what's hidden what's not seen the, the darkness uh, the, the the shadow the the unseen because it's under 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 the earth we can't see it the roots are under the earth the seeds run from from the earth even uh, the water can be a, a sort of underworld because there is a the underwater world and throughout the delivery of these three maps like other possibilities started showing up and for me it was a discovery process about what is the upper world uh, in feeling in for myself, I started seeing it like uh, the sunshine, like the sun, like clarity, like the the exposed the surface, what's out there, the visible, <clears throat> and and also like the, the the mystery of it, the the quality of of me, mysterious like what is, what is yet to be developed and grown and discovered and the, the evolution of it so it's like evolution discovery and and it's so 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 subtle because it, it can easily go into a fantasy world or like oh it's all it's the all the good stuff it's uh, uh, and and I don't know. I'm still uh, exploring with that. But even even in that research process, there is so much that in that question, what is the upper world uh, for you in in comparison with this poop that we just poop on the put on the table? The other distinction that I that I seen that I that I that I don't see in the in this spaces where I was in is that there is a, the stories that come and there is a sort of neurotic neurotic speaking where there is just a, the regular talking this is my story my story my story and there is a this person speaks then this person speaks then this person speaks and this person speaks and and this person said yeah yeah I agree and this person said yeah and then this person said no no and this person said yeah no yeah so there is kind of like a 
um yeah speaking that that it comes that i've noticed that it comes more from from here like it's just this is the story this is the story this is what happened and and it doesn't come from from down here it doesn't it, it's not something that's like uh, creating a completion or a fulfilling a purpose uh, is just something that it has a different intention it has a different purpose and the, the and inside of these stories uh, they say like i went i went to jail and and in there i really had to learn uh, how to how to not give a shit and how to like not see my fear i couldn't like there is no time for fear if you feel this little bit of fear then you're you're done you're down so there there is this uh these stories that they don't really identify what what i is it speaking what part of myself is it speaking right now and there is not even a distinction of that there are parts inside of myself it's just the that like i is all there is that i is only one but uh, in reality from my own self exploration and from what i've seen uh, out there in the world is that we can shift that i from one one part to another part in a millisecond without even noticing one moment we are one thing and the next moment we are uh, something else i can be yeah i can be in a in a space uh, communicating with somebody and then they, they say a story when i repeat it back they just go switch into the next thing like a different layer a different part speaking about that story and the change can happen really really fast and an example that i can give about this is for example when when you're having a conversation with someone uh out in the at the coffee shop for example and then you get a phone call and then you see and it's your mom and then you you're gonna answer it and then you go on the phone and right there uh, your identity completely changes to re to respond to to your mom you become uh your identity chief to to talk to your mom hi mom how are you uh, i'm here i'm having a, a coffee with this friend oh yeah they had my grandma told me about that and Oh, it's such a pity. Yeah, man. Yeah, say hi to that. I love you too. All righty, bye. And you hang up, put a thing on your pocket, and boom, there is another identity shift. And then you are again in the coffee shop with the identity that you had before or a completely new identity. But these identity shifts, they happen very unconsciously and fast and we don't have we haven't been taught in society in the current way of uh, of seeing things uh it, we didn't get taught in school our parents most likely didn't teach us that there is different parts of ourselves that are, are play all the time and that when yeah when we are speaking from from this from this place then uh, like all of, like it becomes even a, a bigger soup and I will say like a, a possibility for for a like a question and a possibility for starting do this investigation for yourself is to start asking what what part of myself is he speaking and make this a, a real question what part of myself is speaking and uh, to answer it just with the mind. Uh, but like feel it how does this voice feel how what is the intention and purpose of this of that communication what is the tone of voice what words am i using uh what what uh, yeah like what am i asking for am i asking for something am i uh, proposing something am i declaring something and what I, what I is speaking, that, that is the key. And it could be, uh, it, it's, it's a good, uh, it's a great research and a, a research that can start like peeling down the layers of the different parts of yourself that, that are there. 
And if you have a notebook, uh, write down, start writing down, like do this experiment of writing down what parts of myself are speaking uh, or what parts of myself are alive in me. And then you start making a list. And uh, for example, in my, in my underworld, I, I had this character called the, the stench or the, the skunk. Uh, which is a, a underworld underworld part of myself that it farts a lot. It it uh, over it over overeats uh, stuff like milk and yogurt and crunchy sweet things and overeats until the the stomach is bloated, and then it farts a lot and. He usually bites his nails and it's a, in avoidance it, it avoids connection uh, and uh, i like throughout the observation of, of of myself i've been able to see that there is that part of myself that i usually comes out when i'm not taking care of myself when there is something deep in there that i'm not actually bringing out into the surface when there is something deep that I'm not paying attention to that I'm just ignoring or like too scared to to even bring it out. So that part of myself like take used to take over and find these things that I needed to create that alchemy inside of myself so that I can be stinky and I can like um, hate myself uh, so that. Uh, so that I didn't have to be responsible to the world in a way like uh, I'm not good enough, I suck, uh, I'm stinky, I'm I'm really not good for myself or the world, so I don't have to be responsible. In a way, that's my, that was my strategy for this of that part of disempowering myself, so that I wouldn't have to take responsibility for um, whatever was present in that moment. It could, it could be um, fulfilling a project that I was committed to, or um, yeah, like taking responsibility for the, the the family space, maybe for cleaning up for cleaning up the room, or I was too like too too scared of this this next step in the project, and and the emotions and feelings uh, started getting too big, and I didn't feel them, so I, I blocked them. And and then the, this other part of myself that I used to call the stench uh, will come up where it will start eating eating yogurt and like clogging this and uh, creating a numbing, uh, then like a really upset stomach, probably from my repressed anger, the anger that I was feeling that I wasn't expressing or using for my creation, and. And it will start farting, farting out, farting like really, really stinky stuff. So I had, I had all the evidence that my stomach feels bad. I'm stinky. I'm a glut, glut. I mean gluttony. Um, and I had all the evidence to support that uh, I wasn't good enough. And that, that is just an example of one of my parts. Uh, there, there is uh, many, many other parts. There is a, a part of myself that is a, the good boy, for example. There is a part uh, in each one of us uh, that is uh, the, the gremlin or the is the kind of like the, the ruler of the underworld. The, the, yeah, the part inside of yourself that, that rules the underworld and rules the, the survival strategy and doesn't want anything to change. He wants things to be in control and, and he wants to, to assure your, your survival and that and that you are safe. And <clears throat> there is other parts uh, of ourselves. For example, the, the child self, there is your child self that uh, is that child self that didn't get to grow up. Is that child self that had uh, longings that didn't get fulfilled, that had desires and wishes that didn't get fulfilled, uh, and uh, traumatic things that happened during our childhood that locked us in, in into that child state, and and there is a part of us that 
out, out of one moment, one thing gets triggered, a situation that is similar to what happened in that moment when we were a child, and boom, this, this child ego state jumps in, and it, it, we become unconsciously our child without even thinking about a full grown up adult uh, or uh, yeah, full grow, grown up being, um, being like a five year old child, three year old child, one year old child, or a 15 year old a teenage boy. And there is a, all, of, all of these different, yeah, there is that, 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 that aspect of ourselves, there is a child. So we become uh, in a way, yeah, like we we make requests from from that space. We create stories from that space. I I was never held. Uh, my mommy didn't love me. My my dad uh, wasn't there with me. And um, and there is like all, all these stories that all the possibilities of stories that could have happened to us uh, in our in our childhood. That that's there. Uh, there is another part of us that that is the. Our, our parent parent boy state or a parent state which is uh, we get from uh, authority voices uh, uh, authority voices that that talk to us and we decided to to make that our voice and they, they usually sound like uh, you should be doing uh, more work in your life like you're not doing enough you should be making more money. You should have some money in your account. You should have, you should have a, a house for your family. Uh, you should, you should shave your beard. Like that's that's not good enough. That you're gonna get rejected. So there is a there is these voices of, of should. There is a voice. The parent voice also has voices of praising, like this. Like you are so good. You are so intelligent. You are the best. You are so strong. Oh, you're gonna be so good when you grow up. Like you're so amazing. Oh, what a good climber you are. Oh, what a good swimmer you are. There is all of these. These are voices of praising, and there is also the voices of uh, punish punishment or voices of uh, reprisal, like. Uh, you're a bad boy. You, you shouldn't have done that. You're, you're too fat for this, or you are too slow. You're, you're, uh, like you, you didn't brush your teeth, or your, your, your breath stinks. Uh, my, my daddy used to tell me something like, you. You're so lazy. You do this all the time. You're like this all the time. You're so lazy. So inside of myself, I, I kept that voice for a very, very long time. And and I based all of my life and all of, all of my, my things based on, on, on that voice. So I started becoming like something that was not lazy or I became reactive to that voice. And, and on the other side, when I started uh, on my own awakening process, I became the opposite. I became like like super lazy. I was like the, the laziest person out of like uh, like that, not 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 giving myself the time to be lazy or something like that. And so then I became like, no, work is, I don't want to work too much because I, I, I've been exhausted. I've been exhausting myself. I've been killing myself over work. And uh, now I don't want to do anything, and I, I just stopped doing doing everything. And that uh, that was like uh, going to to like the other other side of the dichotomy, or the other side of the of the spectrum. And and yeah, so there is a that that's another aspect of yourself that that can come up in the when you're speaking that it can be completely unconscious. Like it can happen in, in one moment. You can be a child in one moment, then you can be an, a, a parent uh, in the other moment, then you can be your, your gremlin in the other moment, then you can be uh, like an underworld character in your other moment. And, and it can like, there is no distinction and it's complete madness. It's complete like chaos and uh, confusion and there is a mess. 
Why well, I say it's a mess. There is no no distinction between one thing and the other. And it's so fast, it happens so fast that there is no time to to stop and to say like, uh, like if you don't have the tools, once you have the tools, you can you can say in a space when you have a, that that uh, distinction in the space that there is many parts inside of you that are speaking. Then you can say what part of yourself is speaking, what I is is speaking, what I is saying that, and then you can have a, a conversation about the conversation instead of just going from one eye to the next eye to the next eye to the next eye just being in a in a hidden agenda i call it like a hidden unconscious agenda because you don't you don't even know that you are doing that you don't even know that you are shifting from one identity to the other so it's happening something that's happening unconsciously it's not something that you are um, consciously controlling or doing it for a purpose uh for a purpose, uh, or a conscious purpose, something that is happening out of a habit, out of um, a norm, out of um, yeah, like an like something like this is just how people do it. There is no distinction, and I can just speak from one to the other, and nobody's gonna call me on it. And this this possibility, these distinctions, they bring you that possibility to bring to your space to whoever is listening to this and to bring into your space, like what I is speaking, what part of yourself is speaking and have a conversation about that. And this can be valuable uh, as a researcher of your identities, the different identities that are uh, at, at work inside of you at all times. <clears throat> So there, is, there has been, we started with the spaces that feel like so much like a prison, There's like this low drama in the air, like there's just like low drama, low drama, low drama, speaking from many different eyes and without any distinction, creating this like huge, massive story about myself, like with evidence and with clear uh, events of things that happen and clear backing uh, of that is actually true that, that all of these stories like I, like they're actually true so the the purpose of all those stories is that that kind of like to to keep you to to sell, to, to protect myself. Like, this is my identity. I don't have to take responsibility. I don't have to change. I don't have to like believe anything else. Like this is, this is what it is for me. And, and I don't have to do anything else because the, uh, because all of this stuff happened in the past for me that showed me that this, this is not going to change. Well, all of this stuff has been happening for me that it shows me that, that this is it. Like there is no other possibility. Life is shit. And this is, and that's where it's going to stay at. And so this this map of the three worlds of the underworld and upper world and the middle world, they 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 have this uh, like they have a capacity of of, of shifting shifting those narratives of, of starting to show something else is possible. And then the the distinction having a distinction between the different eyes, it can it can really uh, it's another map that can you start like like bringing you outside of uh, yourself like in a way like start observing yourself from another point of view not not as you're not as a horse with blinders that can only see uh, a, a small part of, of a spectrum of what's possible uh, but like you actually like when a horse like takes off the blinders and and they can see a bigger spectrum of what what is possible, and uh, because uh, you, uh, you'll be becoming more aware of how and when you are shifting identities, and how and when you are in the underworld, how and when you are in the upper world, and and start getting that that distinction inside of inside of yourself through your own experimentation and through your own uh, experience 
and this experience comes from uh, experimenting, uh, having a part of your attention um, it, with these maps, like like uh, kind of like a, like a in a spaceship when you have a a screen with the instruments and they're they're telling you kind of like the location they are the gps you got the altitude the, the speed and all of these things the same way these maps they they are there to support you in your navigation of the space <clears throat> and in, into telling like where, where are you in this moment <laughs> And the the other part that I haven't mentioned in in this video, which is is kind of like the the first part I I, I wanted to or that is is essential, is an essential practice, is a core practice for anybody who wants to be embodied in in this body in this life, for anybody who wants to embody their their presence, they want to be present in this moment, they want to be here, they want to be uh, open and, and connected to the world. They want to be connected, if you want to be connected to the world, connected to reality, connected with others, with your own feelings, and with what's happening inside of you. And for anybody who wants to reclaim your authority, for reclaiming your center, reclaiming your voice, reclaiming your clarity, and becoming an active agent of, of creation, an active agent of life, an active agent of cultural creativity, of creation of culture. For anybody who wants to become this, this practice is core. The, this practice that I'm gonna talk about, and we, we we call this practice uh, first position. And uh, first position is uh, a practice that is very basic and also very essential uh, for bringing your, your attention and your body, uh, and your attention and your energy to this present moment, to the moment here and now. And uh, how this could help, uh, like how this can like, uh, you you need all of this energy to be able to to observe yourself. To observe yourself, you need to to be able to bring your energy to yourself, uh, to to your center. Otherwise, this energy will be uh, spread all over the world, which is the uh, the more more most ordinary or not normal thing that I've seen around. That the energy. It gets spent unconsciously. That it gets um, that it get, it goes to one place uh, very very easily. It can go to uh, somebody over over there. Uh, it can go to the past. It can be uh, we could have a lot of uh, energy stored in the past that it's just there. It's sitting there, uh, kind of like in a loop, living living over the the same thing. Over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, and and that energy could could be stored back there, and the same the same thing it can happen for the future. We could have like energy stored in the future, just sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, kind of like in a spinning. Like this is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen, and and all of that energy we. We can even have uh, energy storing in projects. We could have energy storing in ideas, in in parts of our body, in different parts of our body. We could have energy stored, and so our energy, our energetic point is malleable. It, it can disperse. It can be in many places at the same time, and it's your energy. Is your energy and is your this is your part of your ex part of your body. You you have an energetic body, and this energetic body it, it has that capability of 
of traveling in the future, back and forward, uh, be going uh, to somebody, coming back, and and is your some sometime some somehow down the down the line you decided that uh, that that energy was gonna be there, and somehow that energy is still there, and and you have the capability of identifying little by little starting to detect where is your energy so for practicing first position is very very simple um, the first step of first position is to center yourself to center this is the step of centering there is three steps and the first step is centering and to do this, there is many ways of doing it. And the way I, I do it now is to imagine that I have a, a ball, an energetic ball right in front of me that is uh, my attention and my energy. And I imagine that this ball is right in front of me and I start detecting, using my senses to detect where is my energy. And I start using my hands to to call that that energy back from wherever it is to here and now. It can be sometimes in the past, and I do this, and you can actually feel this in your body. This is not like a conceptual thing. This is actually I'm bringing my energy to to here and now into this ball that's in front of me, and I'm making it compact and and solid and and integral is a is a it's a ball about the size of a grapefruit you start bringing that energy from the people that that you've been interacting with from from your parents from your mom and your dad from your grandparents from your uncles from school from the teacher from that thing that you did last week from from that thing that you're planning to do next month uh, you start like bringing as much of it as much of it as you can to, to this present moment as much of it like you can just call it hey you can come here come here come here and you start like making this ball right in front of you right in front of your face you start making this ball that is all of your attention and start like maybe there is a thing one thing left that you forgot and then you use it and you bring it and once you have uh, all of your attention once you have like as much as attention as as you want it and as you thought you could collect you can bring that ball use your hands and you can bring it and put it in your physical center which is right under your belly button in between your hips, you put that ball right there. And this is, you can actually sense this in your body, how that attention, you bring it down to your body and your embodiment. This is your embodiment of your center. This is what it is to be you. This is you. This is your energy, your pure energy going and like being inside of you. And just allow that sensation to be there for a moment. Now you are center. Another thing I want to say about being center is that in martial arts, if you practice any martial arts, this is a core practice to be to go uh, to center yourself. And to center yourself, yeah, you bring that energy down to your center and you move from that energy. You move from that energy. Your your whole being moves from that energy. And you can move diagonal, you can move that way. You can move in any, whatever direction you're moving into, you move from the center. You move with your attention. Your, your attention that is here, your center that is here, you move from it. This is your place of power. This is your point of power and your point of where um, where you have your energy. 
uh, from here you can act you can you have you have all sorts of possible different movements uh, whenever that energy is dispersed all, all over the world uh, is whenever that energy is not here you can use it it's unusable and uh, when that energy is uh, for example in the mind a lot like then we're off balance like like the head can feel heavy and and uh, the, the head the head can feel heavy and it's on balance like it, it's like a wobbly tree or something like a tree that has too much weight on the top uh, so when you have your energy here in your center is powerful and also when the when the center is here when the when your yeah when your center is here when your attention is here it's like this tends to be uh, like a more of like usually this happens when we are um when it happens unconsciously unconsciously it happens uh, that we like throwing ourselves into our emotions that you just uh, completely giving yourself up to your emotions and and we're going to like like victim crying and uh, story big stories of, of emotional um, a big emotional process so when it's down here it's your place of power like this is the, where you can still listen to this and listen to this and and this place has a, a, a very very powerful uh, stance uh, all martial arts they practice it your center from here and you move from here so we're gonna go to step two uh, of this first position and once you feel center once you feel that you're in your center that your energy is here present in this moment in a small here and a small now you're gonna use your clicker which is your snap of your fingers to declare that you have a grounding core from your center that that ball that you we just put in there to the center of mother earth to the center of gaia and they are connected these two points they are connected there is a, a cord that is connecting you to gaia and this cord is two-way connection you can receive uh, information and energy from Gaia and you can also send information uh, send uh, send information to Gaia and uh, the, it can it, it's a two-way communication and it's a way two-way cable that you can receive and send energy so this cable this cord you can use when there is an excess of energy in your body to channel channel energy and say, I have too much energy, or I don't know, whatever it is, uh, like the, this energy, it, it rebalances the energy. And this cable is real, is very real. Uh, this core is very real. You can test it at any time by, by standing up and trying to jump. And what will happen when you try to jump? You jump and then you come right back down. This is the gravity. Like that cable is pulling you back down. It's, it's holding you. This is your ground. This is what's holding you. The Mother Earth is holding you and she's right there at all times. And that information you can access to at any time. You can access that. You can declare that, that cable. Once you're center, declare that cable, drop that cord down to the middle of Gaia and you just like feel her, her connection, feel your connection to her, that she's here nurturing you and connecting you all this time. She's here at all times. It's, it's different in the dream space. In the dream space, you sometimes you can jump in a dream space and you, would, you don't come back down. You just keep floating and floating up or you keep like flying, you start flying in the dream and when you're in the in the awakened reality in the physical reality you jump and then you come right back down and this is your your grounding core the power of your grounding core this color this grounding core uh, it tends to it doesn't tend it has a color this grounding core it has a color and my grounding color my grounding core 
uh, color is green right now. Uh, a little bit like these plants here, light green. And so when you're in a team and you're centering together and you should like, it's a great practice to, to declare your grounding core and see what color it is. What color is my grounding core? Yellow, silver, black, stripes, uh, and any other qualities. Mm -hmm. Now that you have your grounding cord, now that you have center, we move on to the third part of this first position, which is your bubble of space. So you have gathered all your attention here, your energy, you have put your energy center point in your physical body. So now you are empowered, you are, you have, you're feeling your essence, you feel your voice. You use your clicker to declare your ground core to the center of Mother Earth, center of Gaia. You're connected, she's holding you right there. You jump and she brings you right back, right there. Once you feel that grounding core and that groundness, use your clicker again and declare your bubble of space. Your bubble of space is a, a bubble that goes around you and is your connection point to the world. This is how you are connected to the world and to the to the space where you are. And in inside of that bubble, there uh, you have access to to the to, to, to your all your world to the whole to your whole world. Inside of there, you, you have access to all of these different things in the future, more in the present, things that are like right in front of your face, uh, things that are in the back, in your past, uh, things that are like low down in the ground or high up, high up in the sky. There is like, you can use your hands like, like this to detect what's happening in your bubble of space. So you use your clicker, your snapping of your fingers to, to declare your bubble of space, and you can use your hands to sense what's happening in that bubble of space. And also to clean it, to, cl to clear it, to cleanse it, um, to, to detect if there is any holes, if there is any big holes that, that, need, that, need, that are leaking energy. So these holes, they, they usually leak energy. Uh, there is some other uh, uh, ways that this, the bubble it can like be sucking somebody else's energy. So maybe like your your bubble might be going, your energy and attention might be going to somebody else, and that creates this suction um, sensation that is like sucking sucking their energy. So your bubble of space becomes your your space. And it's a powerful tool to distinguish what's happening in your world. Um, who, uh, where is your center? Where is your attention, your energy? And it's also your boundaries. It's also like your, the distinction between you and another being. And, and what happens in many relationships and, and in many uh, codependent relationships, uh, for example, is that the, the the bubbles they merge together or they kind of like go together. The the partner, the one partner and another partner, their bubbles are kind of like intertwined, and this makes it very difficult to to discern to discern or distinguish between what's my energy and what's the other person's energy. What is mine and what is yours. It becomes uh, completely uh, uh, confusing, and um, and it is like uh, like the process from a, a child. When a child is born into the world, it it go it's in his mother's bubble. The, the child is in the mother's bubble. He's here. He's in in mother's bubble, and even in here in the belly. When they're in the belly, when we're in the belly. Uh, we're still in our mother's bubble and we come out, we're in her arms and she, she's holding us and we're in, in, in her bubble for a very, very long time. Um, I think naturally um, it happens different for different animals, for humans. Uh, we are in our mother's bubble 
or I can speak for for myself. Like I, I was in my mother's bubble, yeah, at least until I was eighteen, and then like um, and then it became like a bigger bubble. Like I was still in her bubble, but I didn't know it until I was uh, till uh, I was like around thirty. 36 37 when i started seeing like there there were still parts of myself that was in my mother's bubble like there were still part of myself that that were in my model mother's bubble and and that that the results of that was that i was creating relationships uh with my partners that that was like uh, like my mothers like i was projecting my mothers uh, onto my other partners be, uh, so that I could have that uh, emerging, that the merging of my bubble with their bubble, my bubble, my bubble with my partner's bubble. So I was unconsciously, all this time, I was unconsciously asking my partner to hold me like like a mother, like my mother held me. Uh, in a way, like, I still didn't, I didn't have that distinction uh that that my bubble is my bubble and i can stand like an adult in my bubble and she can have her and she has her bubble and 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 they they don't have to be merging like that they don't have to be holding like that 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 is actually it wasn't serving her and it wasn't serving me uh it was something done out of unconscious just unconscious behavior not knowing uh the distinctions that that, that we know now and not knowing anything different, not having like uh, a role model of anything different, not having like a, a possibility for anything different until we did the journey together or, of uh, and together and individually of starting to fill our, our own bubble and to see how, how they were and en- merged with each other. And this happened with many relationships. This happened to, um, to man, like we were... Uh, we're still our center is still with our mother until we consciously decide to do this work and actually like take our center away take on center to our, to ourselves in a way that that's uh, your initiation into your adulthood into reclaiming your center from your mother otherwise you you will be perpetuating your your mother's relationship your enmeshment with your mother in your other partnerships uh, with your partners so this is the the powerful thing about this first position your center you're grounded and your bubble and these three things that you keep them uh, with you and every time that you're holding a space every time that you are navigating space that means all the time as if there is no time where we're like okay i'm gonna take a break now and I'm not going to hold the spaces like life is happening now. Um, the connection is happening now. Connection is possible right now. And, and I don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. I don't know what's going to happen in the next moment. So it takes uh, like, for me, I want to move from my center. I want to move from here. I want to move from from the essence of my being, where where I have power, where I have power to create, where I have power to to bring possibilities, where I have power to live life full out, and and the this uh, this this first position it brings a, a yet another tool that you have for navigating space and for embodying your body now like imagine like the normal or the yeah the the or the ordinary way of embodying the body there is not even a consciousness of a center there is not even a consciousness of a grounding core there is not a consciousness of a bubble, maybe a little bit. Uh, there is like consciousness, there is an awareness of thoughts. So there is like the, the, the ordinary way of embodying this body or the ordinary way that I was embodying my body was from here. I thought, I think, therefore I am. Or yeah, like I think and and like this was the, the almighty, the mind was the almighty dictator of reality. And from that from that way, I I was killing all the possibilities 
Uh, I was killing all intimacies in in my world, and I was really living in a fantasy world where I thought that what I was thinking it was actually what was happening. Until throughout experimentation, throughout working with teams and receiving feedback from my teams, I started a, a process started happening inside of me of like a heartbreak of like. What do you like? What do you mean? Like, you don't want to hear what I got to say. What do you mean? Like, what I'm the intention that I had is not is not working. Yeah, like I, I used to have like this intention of like sharing, and then my team will say will like pause me and say like, no, this is like this is creating. You have an unconscious purpose there. I will be getting the feedback. You have an unconscious purpose. You're not feeling your feelings. You're not. You're not telling us that what's happening for you. There is so much there. And, and throughout this process, like it came more into embodying different parts of myself. Uh, more specifically, my, my feelings, my, my emotional center, and then like my my adults, my adult self. More like connected, yeah, with now with the sex and and the, the stomach and 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 the, a, a process started happening where there was more, more alignment, like fair more alignment and less reliance on, on this and more. Uh, and that was that, that, that in itself is a, like a completely shift of the world. Like ordinarily the world is running from up here. Uh, ordinary, in the ordinary world, the world is running from up here. And as soon as I, I made that shift, like the the world is running from a completely different space now. And that's the possibilities that I want to bring in this video. These three different possibilities of first position, centering, grounding, and bubbling yourself into this space. You know, a way to embody, in a way, your full being and your your instruments here in your spaceship you got your uh, three worlds the underworld the upper world and the middle world and they're, they're not like they're not really like a sandwich they're more like a triangle uh but I, but anyways yeah like there is those, those three worlds and there is your map of the identities you have like different identities what what identity is speaking in this moment and then you start getting these these panels, and there is many other maps that are, that will also bring uh, more possibilities of knowing, of kind of like showing you where you are and where you could be. What is what else is possible right now? This is what it is about. What else is possible right now? And I feel grateful to be able to share these maps here with you and to do this exploration as well for myself into this discovery of uh, how to deliver these maps and how to diffuse and move forward these spaces that feel like a prison. They feel like you're trapped, that it's all shed, like the world is shed and, and nothing else is possible. And I am a piece of shed and I am worthless. And I'm a, I'm a burden. Nobody cares about me. You know, this, this kind of like prisons and ideas and thoughts. And it's from the underworld. It's poop. It's like poop. You yeah, just bring it on the table. There is nothing wrong with it. You just like bring it on the table and, and put it there in a, in a space where something can be done with it. Not that you like my, my old part of myself will just throw that shit uh, anywhere and not have a, a safe container for it but like create a create a safe container where that can go and something can be done with it and and then something else becomes possible yeah so the ordinary world will be running from up here and at the the speed of mine love is not possible 
if you're going at the speed of mine and going like still thinking that this and that and and that this is true and this is not true and and agreeing and disagreeing and your opinions and your preferences you're going to be going at the speed of, of mine this is like the, the speed of mine and you'll be relating from here and you'll be missing out on all of this all of this there wouldn't be any authenticity about this you see it's all about this and the, the possibility is that in coming into tune with your own embodiment and yourself you can go into relation uh, into relation with the world and with others from from all your being like not not just from up here mine my ideas your ideas my ideas your ideas but from all of your being like you can be in connection with the world have intimacy with your partners in all five bodies and have intellectual intimacy you can have emotional intimacy by sharing emotions listening to emotions completing emotions together you can go into energetic intimacies of uh, exchanging energy in so many different ways and you can go into archetypal intimacies where you are working as your archetypes working as your your purpose the for being here on earth acting consciously on purpose and collaborating with each other from your archetypal levels so being that magician being that sorceress being the game world builder being the the village we were your village we were and like collaborating and collaborating from those from the uh, in intimately in, in that in that body in your body as a as this archetype and this the the possibility of that to me is exciting enough to 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 really keep going in this process that has been um well if i say difficult it wouldn't really cut it but it's like devastating it have been devastating for my old part of myself that had an idea about the world and now seeing that there is something else that is possible and being with that possibility at all times like never never like yeah, like not going into the uh, the idea that I know how things are and that, that uh, and that the world works like this and like that there is just there is these maps, there is my centering uh, about being embodying my experience and what I'm feeling. And there is uh, my my collaboration and connection with others. And and this just opens up a space for more uh, extraordinary things to happen in, in my life and the life of the people around me. So thank you for, for hearing all of this and until the next time that's all for now